We all want to be free. But we have some strange ideas of what it means to be free. A lot of us think that freedom means being able to do what we want. But if you look at your life, you realize that sometimes doing what you want will have good results, and sometimes it has bad results. Sometimes it'll lead to happiness, sometimes it'll lead to pain. So if you really think about it, you realize that freedom means being able to do what leads to happiness. What leads to well-being. And you notice that sometimes that what leads to well-being is what you want to do, and other times it's not what you want to do. Doing things that you like that lead to well-being, those are easy. The hard ones are the ones that you don't want to do but will lead to well-being. And it's in that area where your wants are the major restriction on your freedom. So you've got to look at where those wants come from, where those desires come from. The Buddhist point of view, they come from ignorance. But ignorance doesn't mean just not knowing. It means knowledge that gets in the way, knowledge that's in the wrong terms. And we carry a lot of that knowledge around with us. Things that are true but are not beneficial, or maybe true and beneficial at some times but not really right for other times. It's like the Buddha's comments on speech. He said there are things you can say that are true and beneficial, but you also have to be sensitive to what's the right time to think those things to speak those things. The same principle applies to your thoughts. We carry a lot of useless tru truths around with us. And one of the major skills in the meditation is learning to put them aside. They come down to two types of things. One is the narratives of our lives. And you realize it. When you look at the way you tell the story of your life to yourself, it's not one narrative. You have lots of different narratives. And sometimes they get all tangled up. And the same with views about the world. We have lots of different views about the world kind of jumbled up in our minds. And it's hard to tell which one is going to come out and impose itself on you at any particular time. So one of the skills in meditation is learning how to put all those things aside. And look for what's only true and beneficial and right for right now. When you're doing concentration practice, there's only a few things that are really right for right now. Those are the thoughts that keep you focused on the breath, keep you focused on the present moment. And as for other thoughts, no matter how true they may be and no matter how beneficial they may be at other times, you've got to learn to put them aside. Thoughts about what you did today, thoughts about what you're going to do later today, what you're going to do tomorrow. Those are narratives at the moment you don't want to get involved in, because they limit your freedom to do what's the right thing to do right now which is to stay focused on the present moment, to keep watch over the movements of your mind. When you look at the Buddha's teachings, you notice he doesn't he's not the sort of person who tells any grand narratives about who created the world with what purpose. The large narratives usually come down to the power of karma. And where is karma being done? It's being done right now right here. So the purpose of those narratives is to focus you right here. Same with large metaphysical theories. There are very few in Buddhism, but the important ones do have to do with karma, your actions. The, very, the Buddha is very clear on his teaching and action. 
what you're experiencing right now is the results of past actions combined with your present actions and their results. You can't do anything about past action, but what this explanation does is really focuses you on what you're doing right now. So those are the kind of narratives and worldviews that really are helpful and really are beneficial, and they're right for right now. They keep you focused here. Once they've got you focused here, then you can drop them. Because the creation of the present moment is partly already done from the past, but some of it's going on right now. The movements of your mind, these little movements going here and going there, those create the world, your experience of the world. They seem so minor, so inconsequential, and yet they have huge consequences, both for whether your experience of the present moment is mainly going to be pleasant or painful, and for the pleasure and pain you're going to experience on into the future. If you're weighing yourself down with pain right now, it's also likely you're going to weigh other people down with pain, too. So all the kind of thinking that would possibly be truthful and beneficial and right for right now keeps you, wants to keep you focused right here. Anything else that pulls you away from right here is not right for right now. No matter how true it may be, no matter how beneficial it may be at other times, it's not right for here right now. And one of the major skills in meditation is learning how to put all that other stuff aside. Say, no, we're not going there. We're not going to give reality to those constructs, because that's what they are. They are constructs. They're fabrications. And they seem to demand so much of our attention because there are times when they're useful fabrications, but they're not useful right now. You kind of have a very strong sense of that. See the importance of the present moment. See the importance of what you're doing right now, and learn to get sensitive to what's skillful right now and what's not skillful right now. What kind of breathing is good right now? What way of focusing on the breath is good right now? What's getting good results? Think about that. Focus on that. The more you can do that, the more freedom you're exercising in the present moment. Don't let those other thoughts come in and limit your freedom to do what's going to give good results. This is the only place where you have freedom, is in your choice of what to do in the present moment. And one of the skills you want to develop as a meditator is to maximize the range of that freedom. So any thought that comes in and restricts that freedom it wants you to think about other things or worry about other things or limit the range of what you can do right now. Just let that go. As soon as any kind of thought like that comes up, just put it aside, put it aside, put it aside. Don't give it more reality than it deserves. Every thought is a tool. And if you're sawing right now, you don't want to clutter your hands up with screwdrivers or levels or shovels or pickaxes. Even though those tools may be useful at other times, they're not what you want right now. You're trying to saw a piece of wood. So the only tool you need in your hand right now is that saw. And you say, focused on the point where the saw meets the wood. And so by limiting your attention to the point that's really important, even though it seems like a limitation, it's actually a way of expanding your freedom, your freedom, your freedom to do what's going to give good results. And when you come right down to it, that's the only freedom that matters. So 
So stay focused right here, because right here is where things are being created, things are being fabricated. And be very careful about the movements of your mind. Be very careful about what tools you're picking up. There's only one tool that's useful right now. So focus all your attention on using that tool in the best way, because that's where freedom lies.